this faith thing episode 117 faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is trusting in god with all your heart faith is knowing that all things are possible with god that nothing is too difficult for god to do this faith thing can be easy when we have god on our side faith is the word of god welcome back for another episode Friends, let me tell you, I'm suffering with this minor nasally cold, but that's not going to stop the word of God. So let's just get right into it for today. Have you ever asked a person how their day was and the generic answer that comes out of their mouth is it was okay? Or have you ever greeted a person bright and early on Monday morning and you ask about their well-being, you ask about how they're doing and they tell you something like I'm tired or I'm frustrated when in fact they just can't be that tired with the way that they look, the way that they're radiating, the way that they're glowing. Or let's be honest, have you ever been that person who has actually answered the question like that? I know I have. Until one day when someone asked me how I was feeling and I said something like, I'm tired. Then I quickly changed my answer because the truth of the matter was that I wasn't really tired. It was just an answer that was so generic that I usually give at that time to a question like that. But friends, many of us on a daily basis, we behave in that such manner. We behave in that manner where someone is asking us how we are and we're telling them the wrong answer. We're giving them a lie because we're not really that tired or we're not really that frustrated. We tell God that we're tired of a particular situation or a particular thing and then God changes that particular story for us. He moves and he shifts us into a new direction, the one that is much better or at least the one that we think is much better, gratifying, fulfilling, satisfying, but yet we still complain. We pray and beg for a new job and he gives it to us and what do we do? We still complain. We beg and plead for a new house in a new area in a up and rising area where the houses and the homes look new and they're up to date they're current but what do we still do friends we still complain we ask him we beg him we plead for a new car the latest car that is on the market and God blesses us with this car but what do we still do we complain we complain we complain and we complain and that is all God ever hears is simply our complaints complaining friends is a sin because what you are doing is that you are lying about a situation that is actually good for you you whine about what the lord has done for you you complain you murmur about what the lord has done for you and what that actually does my friends is that it sets you back tremendously complaining is a setup a trap that the enemy uses to build this unnecessary wall between you and God making you to feel that you are entitled to complain and entitled to go against what God has done for you when in fact you are not let's look at one major story in the Bible that illustrates this point and I'm sure that many of you probably already know where I'm going because this particular story it really illustrates this complaining and murmuring that sets you back and what ultimately what that's going to do to you is it's going to make you go through this long unnecessary journey that you should not have any reason to go through in the first place when you study the book of exodus you find the journey of the children of israel in egypt they were under this Egyptian slavery. When you actually study this book, you read about how they had to go through this long standing bondage with Pharaoh. And when they were delivered from the hands of Pharaoh, all these children did were complaints. All they gave God were complaints, grumblings, and murmurings. When you go back to the book of Exodus, chapter 1, You read there, it says that there was a king, a king that was now made the newly elected king of the land of Egypt. And this king did not know Joseph. Remember that the children of Israel, you have to study their story properly. So you start, you start studying them from the book of Genesis and you see that Joseph, he too was sold into slavery. That's how he ended up in Egypt in the first place. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was now sent into the land of Egypt and then fortunately for Joseph, he rose and he rose to become the governor of Egypt. Okay. And so during his reign, there was a famine in all the surrounding lands. So when there was a famine in all the surrounding lands, Joseph's father, Jacob, 
he sent his brothers into the land of Egypt to go and buy food, to go and buy corn. And when they went into the land of Egypt, that's how they ran into their brother. Unbeknown to them, they ran into their brother, Joseph. And Joseph now was able to restore his relationship with his family. And he now sent for his family from the land of Israel into the land of Egypt. And that's how they now were able to migrate into this land of Egypt. And so they, of course, when you have a family, of course, they will begin to multiply and, and grow into this land. So that's what happened. They begin to multiply and they begin to grow in the land of Egypt. So that's how they even got there in the first place. Okay. So now when Joseph died, when Joseph died, this new king that I'm talking about, this Pharaoh that I'm talking about, he did not know Joseph. But when you really study the Bible, friends, when you actually sit down to study the Bible, how could he not know Joseph? Even if he wasn't alive when Joseph was alive, how could he not know Joseph? You have to understand that everything that happens in your life, first of all, before I move on with this story, everything that happens in your life is so divinely orchestrated by God to purposely happen that way for your ultimate good. But when you're going through it, it may not look like it's good. It may not even feel good. In fact, it's not going to feel good because when Joseph was sold into slavery, it wasn't a nice thing. It it wasn't a pleasant thing but when you remember when he was now forgiving his brothers he told his brothers that he forgave them because God sent him there for them you think Joseph enjoyed being in in bondage he enjoyed being in jail he enjoyed being accused of course not but the ultimate purpose of Joseph being sent to the land of Egypt was for his family so whenever God does anything in your life friends you are not to complain so now they, the Bible says that this Pharaoh did not know Joseph. And when I really study it over and over again, I'm trying to understand, am I missing something when I'm reading it? Because I don't understand how he cannot know Joseph. Even if he wasn't alive, like I said, when Joseph was there, how does he not know Joseph? I mean, he couldn't have been that far removed. But the Bible says he did not know Joseph. Now, this new Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 1, Let's go starting from verse 8 to 14. It says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it breaks out. They join our enemies and fight against us and escape from our land. That's what the, this Pharaoh is saying is let us capture these people before they decide that they want to leave, before they try to get out of our land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in all kind of work in the field. In all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. They made them work. It says they ruthlessly, without even any regard, they ruthlessly made them to work as slaves. So you can see here, that's how this slavery began for the children of Israel. During this bondage that they were in, during this slave period that they were in, God raised up Moses to lead these children out of Egypt. But Pharaoh was so adamant and not letting them go. He held on to them as if they were his property. They belonged to God, but he held on to them as if they were his property. And when you read chapters 1 through 13 of Exodus, you will see this whole journey, this back and forth, plague after plague, one plague after the next one. The water was turned into blood. Frogs came out. Boils came. They did all, God did so much to make Pharaoh to release these children, but they did not. He did not want to release them. He wanted to hold on to them with all his might. And then they kept complaining. These, these children of Israel, they were complaining that they wanted out. 
They wanted out. And so when God now raised up Moses and Aaron, his brother, when he raised them up to deliver them, they were able to cross the Red Sea. When you get into Exodus 14, you will see there that the children of Israel were able to cross the Red Sea. Not only were they able to cross the Red Sea, they were able to cross the Red Sea on dry land. Friends, please, when you have time, because the passage is too long, when you have time, please study the book of Exodus and see how awesome and, and how how wonderful and how amazingly awesome this God that we serve is. He separated the Red Sea. He told Moses, raise up your rod and speak to the water and the water separated for the children of Israel. And not only that, as they now all pass through dry land, as they all passed into dry land, okay, they now turned around and he told, the, told Moses again, speak to the water and closed up the water and all of Pharaoh and his armies, his men, they all drowned because this God that we serve is so awesome. Friends, when God does a miracle for you, you need to stop complaining. These kids, these children, yes, they behaved like kids, children, all right? They were complaining and murmuring to God. They were telling God, we want to get out of this land of Egypt because we are being held as slaves here. And God delivered them out of the land of Egypt, specifically in Exodus 14, 13 through 31. They went out of the land of Egypt. And now when they finally got into Exodus 15, these children were free. They were free and God was ready to move them into the land that is flowing with milk and honey. But when you jump into Exodus 16, 1 through 2, it says they set out from Elam and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt and the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. They grumbled, friends. They grumbled. They murmured. They complained. Right after their victory, they began to complain. Now, you were in this land. You were a slave in this land. And God so good, he delivered you from this people, the, these these rubbish Egyptians who wanted to hold on to you and squish your destiny in their hands. God delivered you from them and as soon as you have been delivered what do you do you begin to complain grumble murmur friends this is what you do this is what you do this is what we all do god has done so much for us he does so much for us every single day and the first thing that we do is complain that goes back to the example that i gave about us waking up in the morning and someone greeting us and the first thing that we say is, oh, I'm tired. You cannot possibly be tired if you slept for eight hours. If you are otherwise healthy and normal, you should not be tired after sleeping for eight hours. We complain. You know, friends, there's some people who went to sleep just like you last night that didn't wake up. There's some people who are sleeping currently wherever they're located, but they're not going to wake up. So why are you waking up and you're complaining? Or you beg for a new house and God has delivered you from this small shack that you were living in and you live in this new house now and you're complaining about the house, a four bedroom home with a two car garage. It has heat. It has air conditioning. It has a stove, a refrigerator and your refrigerator is fully stocked. Your cabinets, your goods are completely stocked. Your whole entire family is well, alive and well in this home and yet you're still complaining. What are you complaining about? What are you murmuring about? Do you know that there's some people who in the winter time currently that are sleeping outside on the ground in the snow? They don't have clothing to wear. They don't have shoes to wear. They don't have gloves that they can put on their hands. They don't have hats that they can put on their heads. They don't have scarves that they can wrap around their necks. They don't have coats to warm their bodies up. But yet you do. And you're driving in your nice Mercedes, your nice Jaguar, your nice Toyota Corolla or whatever car you're driving and you're complaining about it. This is what we do to God all the time. Instead of us to be on our knees thanking him every single day. That's what the children of Israel should have been doing. They should have been thanking God for what he had done for them. Yes, truly they sang and they gave praises to him when they crossed the Red Sea. But right after they began to complain and murmur. And this friends is why we lose our blessing. This is why God doesn't want to do anything else for us. 
These children, they were complaining. They stressed Moses out so much. They wanted food to eat. God sent manna. They wanted flesh to eat. God sent quail. They wanted water to drink. God sent water. They frustrated Moses so much so that God told him to speak to the rock. And because of frustration, Moses struck the rock. And not only did he struck it, not only did he hit it, he hit it twice out of frustration. And because of that, Moses himself suffered tremendously because he did not enter into the promised land. Meanwhile, he was the one begging and pleading, interceding, begging and pleading, going to God, Father God, please, these children, God, please, these children, God, please, these children. He was begging on their behalf. He was pleading on their behalf. He was on his knees on their behalf. And yet, because of frustration, he hit the rock twice and he did not enter into the promised land. Friends, when you complain and you murmur and you grumble about what God is doing in your life, what God is divinely orchestrating, in your life that you cannot even see you can't even see right beyond your fingertips but God that is on his throne who is sitting up in heaven on his throne looking at his footstool he is the one that knows the day before the night he is the one that knows the night before the day he's the one that can see left and right you can't see anything but God is so divinely orchestrating your footsteps trying to get you to your destination and he is maneuvering you in a way that is strategic and you are complaining about the journey and not only that you have been delivered from the journey and yet you are complaining friends what you are going to do is hinder yourself from getting into your promised land God is not stupid God is not blind friends he doesn't sleep he doesn't slumber he doesn't make mistakes and he's never late what we do as children of God is that we complain too much we always want to go back to Egypt he has delivered us from Egypt but we always want to go back always referencing where we have come from instead of us to look ahead we complain these children of Israel complained and Moses began to receive instructions from God he would go up on the mountain to go and meet God to do, to receive instructions of what to do and as he's coming down from the mountain he sees these children of Israel worshiping idols Moses again gets frustrated he breaks the tablets out of frustration he destroys these altars that they have raised up because they're saying well why would Moses leave us for such a long time we were better off in Egypt or we would have been better off if we had died in Egypt. Can you imagine? They cried so much that they wanted to get out. And God delivered them. But yet they were still crying. Friends, you got to be kidding me. This, I mean, when you read this story and when you really understand this story, it, it just doesn't make much sense as to why you complain so much. Or why they complain so much. But yes, we do it too. Why, why do you complain so much? This is what we do to God and God is frustrated. And then we beg God and we want him to do new things in our life. But God is saying, I can't do new things with you when you keep complaining. All you do is complain. Why would I give you new things? Why would I give you better things when all you do with what I've already given you is to complain? God wants to continuously elevate us, friends. He never got friends, friends, friends. God never designed this life to be hard. God never wanted us to suffer. God does not want us to suffer. He did not sit on his throne and design us as children, making us in his image and say, oh yes, I want this pain to be on this child. I want this pain to be on this child. I want this disease to be on this child. God doesn't do that, friends. God is always there. He is on our side. God is on our side. He has our back at all times. But we have to stop complaining about him taking us out of Egypt when we've already wanted him. One, that's what we begged him for. That's what we complained to him for. We wanted him to take us out and he took us out. But yet we keep referencing Egypt. This journey that should have taken these children of Israel probably no more than two weeks. Took them 40 years. They were walking up and down aimlessly. Walking up and down tired about nothing. Grumbling and complaining when God was ready to deliver them. God was ready to make sure that they had their ultimate victory, but they kept complaining. Friends, the moral of the story here is don't complain. Instead, when you are in the midst of everything, that is why the Bible tells us that in all things, 
In all things, give thanks to God. It doesn't say in some things. It doesn't say when it feels good. It doesn't say when it looks good. Only give thanks to God. It said in all things, in all situation, give thanks to God. Because friends, it could be worse. It could be worse. Thank God for what he has done. Thank God for what he is yet to do, what you haven't seen, but thank him because that shows God that you believe in him. Friends, God owes no man. He owes us absolutely nothing. So whenever God delivers you from whatever this pain is, whatever this sorrow is, you should be thanking God. Furthermore, let me tell you this, if you don't know this, your complaints will never move God. It doesn't make God move any faster on your behalf. Your complaints has nothing to do for God. It doesn't do anything to God. Okay. Because with, whether you complain or not, God is still God. See how, see how awesome this God is. Whether you complain, whether we complain or not, whether we cry or not, God is still on the throne. God is still God. That doesn't diminish God at all. Not even for an inch, not even for a second, not even for a millisecond does it diminish God. And how sovereign he is. So stop complaining. When you desire to leave Egypt. And God takes you out of Egypt. Your job is to thank him. But when you complain friends. What you do is you prolong your journey. You delay your blessings. And you hinder your miracles. If you want God to move you forward. You need to stop complaining. God wants to do it for you, friends. But God is saying in his heart that I can't do much for these people because all they do is complain. All they want to do is complain. And so the children of Israel, because of their complaints, God was so angry and frustrated with them. But God's so good, he still allowed the the children of Israel to enter, but only Joshua and Caleb. Everybody else had to die in the wilderness. None of them entered into the promised land. Moses didn't enter into the promised land and these children that he left out, every last one of them, they all died. The only two that entered into the promised land were Joshua and Caleb. Friends, God has promised all of us total victory. That is what he wants to do. All we need to do is to believe in him. All we need to do is to endure to the end, wait and believe that what God said he will do, that he is more than able to perform it. God doesn't have to tell us his strategy. He is not obligated to answer us the way we want him to answer us. God does not have to answer us the way we want him to answer us, friends. You don't dictate for God. God dictates to you. And that is what we are missing as children of God, is that we want God to answer us the way we want him to answer us. And that's not how it works. God will answer us the way God wants to answer us, the way he knows best to answer us. For our good. God is not out there to harm you friends. God is not wicked. He is more than able to handle all situations. At all times. Never take matters into your own hands. Like the children of Israel did. And they began to build up altars of idols. Don't ever do that. Don't begin to worship these idols. And take matters into your own hands. And then make it worse. Let God be God friends. And let God lead you. You can never ever 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 go wrong. He can never lead you astray. If God is your leader. You will never be led astray. You need to have faith. Total faith in God friends. Believe. Believe that he is able to do it. And when God delivers you from this land of Egypt. Stop going back to Egypt with your complaints. Because friends. God has already done it for you. And now your job is to keep moving forward. Friends, I hope that this message has blessed you. Go in peace and I will speak with you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adil Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.